Okay, so I'm on day three of CES I'm at the uh, Venetian in the section which has got lots of information about wireless power. And I'm here with Brian Aaron Front. He's the uh, what's your title again, sorry? Yes, I'm the Global Head of Sales and Marketing for ASEA. Now, I last spoke to an ASEA executive back in 2016, and it's now 2022, so I'm here to find out what has changed in all this time. Yeah, so a lot has changed since uh, 2016. Uh, first of all, back then, we had our first uh, technology and then uh, just licensing the technology at that time we're mm -hmm. bringing it about uh, we didn't have any regulatory um, approvals. approvals at yeah. that time uh, today we have FCC approval here in the United States and 45 some odd other approvals now globally throughout Europe we have CE UK Australia mm -hmm. uh, New Zealand uh, this last quarter we received uh, and also throughout Latin America now, most people think of power over the air solutions as being something that can charge your mobile phone or your other devices at a distance. That's what was promised all that time ago, and we've seen Motorola and Lenovo and Xiaomi last year showing off demo units, but there's lots of other applications. So how close are we to commercializing the ability to charge my phone over the air, and what else can we use the technology for? What will we see it in this decade? Yeah, matter of fact, uh, this is a year of commercialization. So actually, I do have some examples of a uh, partner we have, Arcos, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Paris, France. Yeah. Uh, they are going to introduce, and we have prototypes here, of four consumer devices. Sure. We'll go and have a look at that in a sec, but we'll keep going. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so um, uh, the other big difference also from when you spoke to us, uh, we uh, provide wireless power over the ISM band frequencies, very popular as we know today, Wi-Fi frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. That's what we talked about in 2016. Yeah. Today, we also have 5.8 gigahertz. Right. Though our technology, and that's what ASI is, ASI is a wireless power technology development company. Mm -hmm. We're not a manufacturer, so we provide the basically the roadmap, if you will, right? The intellectual property. You're licensing the technology. We're licensing the technology, yeah. exactly. So now we have a 5.8 gigahertz, Japan 5.7 gigahertz, mm -hmm. reference design, and we have actually the system back there, which we didn't have in 2016. Yeah. Uh, anywhere between is some, some variables, but double, triple to quadruple the amount of power and distance. Uh, Whilst for, being safe and not frying people. Uh, meeting those regulatory mm -hmm. uh, uh, specifications. Because exactly. that was something that people were concerned about, but clearly that's not an issue at all. Uh, we've proven now in 45 countries and growing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how long, before we look at the devices, how long will it be before I can get an iPhone or a Samsung with the technology built in, I can buy a little wireless power router and it will send me the power? Yeah, I'd be uh, amazing if I could predict when that would be. <laughs> uh, I'd go right to the winning lottery numbers sure. and I go mean, predict we, those. We yeah. did have Samsung Sorry. announce at yeah. CES that yeah. they can harvest uh, RF waves from your Wi-Fi router to recharge yeah, well, the remote. Quite honestly, it's just not enough ambient. Yeah. I mean, a harvesting. remote is not your mobile phone. It's very low power requirement. Very low. Yeah. 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 So uh, we see this as, quite frankly, evolutionary, not revolutionary. We'd like it to be revolutionary, yeah. right? So we see there's going to be an interim step prior to uh, being built into the phone. So you'll have companies that we're working with today mm -hmm. that will build phone sleeves with Coda into it. Yeah. Uh, in 2019, also another difference from when you first met us, mm -hmm. we won the CES Innovation Award for a phone sleeve concept design. Yeah. Uh, we call it the uh, Coda Forever Smartphone Sleeve. Mm -hmm. And I mean, originally, before phones had wireless cheat charging built in, you could buy a little adapters that would plug into your lightning or USB socket and you could put it behind the phone in the case and it would transform your phone into a wirelessly cheat charging phone. So that's sort of what's going to be happening, you're saying. Yeah, with so we phones. see these dongles, if mm. you will, the sleeves of dongle. Yeah. Matter of fact, our prototype that we built also has Qi in it. So yeah. we're very complimentary to Qi. Matter of fact, we also introduced another difference, another um, uh, award-winning innovation that we developed, which is our Coda power table. And we go over there, I'll show you. Yeah. The table we're showing there is actually a completely wireless powered table that can go into a restaurant, a cafe, an airport, coffee shop, that's now getting power through the transmitter and powering phones on top of the table with Qi. Well, let's so go and have we're a combining look. both. Let's yeah. go. So this is our, our 2.4 gigahertz transmitter that mm -hmm. uh, this reference design and concept was for industrial use, uh, buildings, you think of drop ceiling in a building, you'd have this uh, 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter transmitter. Uh, we're agnostic to the form factor, happens to be the design that we came up with, but our partners will come up with all other sorts of designs. Would never look like that. For instance, we're working with uh, automobile manufacturers. Yeah. So, you, sorry, that is the, the the panel up top there with the- With, with the, the light ring, up, yeah, yeah, with yeah. that light ring. But it, right? could, it could be any form factor. Could be anything, they, right? Yeah. So that is actually transmitting power to this table. There's a receiver in this table mm -hmm. that's receiving the power that is powering two Qi 
coils that I can now drop my phone on and start charging. Great. And this table has no wires. I feel like I'm in Vegas. Yeah, I'm a magician. Right. Yeah. Look at this. No <laughs> wires. <laughs> right. And now I'm charging my phone. Yeah. Uh, and the beauty of this is, especially we've heard from um, uh, potential customers, that uh, you know the ability or uh, difficulties of running power to throughout a restaurant to mm -hmm. a coffee shop. You got a cable everything up. I everything. Mean, right. I mean, it's like the old days when you had to put Ethernet wire everywhere and Wi-Fi exactly. solved that problem. Yep. And yeah. finally, it's happening with. And power. we also solved since 2016. So running power to the transmitter. Mm -hmm. Well, in industrial settings, you could do it over PoE now. So right. we have power over Ethernet mm -hmm. in addition to regular mains power. Sure, and and that's enough power over Ethernet to power a wireless chi charger, for example. D yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here are some of the devices uh, we announced in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, consumer products company Arcos out of Paris, France. Yeah. Uh, they have four devices that we're working with them to develop. This happens to be a indoor uh, wireless camera. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an air quality temperature sensor. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's a watch, a, yeah. a health smart fitness watch. smartwatch, yeah. mm -hmm. and a, uh, a tracker, like a pet tracker yeah. or a, a luggage tracker, whatever you want to put it on. And if I was to put a phone down on that section that right there, so I'm just going to grab my phone yeah. and uh, put it on the table over here. And the, uh, Apple has moved the coil, as you were saying. Let's just leave it there for a sec. Yeah, pull and it down. Move a it sec. down a little bit. There we go. There we go. Wireless charging. Through the wireless transmission system. Now, you had a second thing to demo? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We are in another section of uh, your stand, so show us what uh, you've got over here. Yeah, I mean, so this, we have, this looks like the panel that's in the ceiling. This is actually, exactly, it just shows you on a, on a stand. So mm -hmm. this is the exact same panel that's in the ceiling um, from a 2.4 gigahertz trans transmitter mm -hmm. technology. Uh, but we were talking about, uh, we see this as being kind of in, uh, an incremental process, uh, an evolution, so we'll see um, phone sleeve manufacturers, uh, consumer uh, device manufacturers, we're talking with a, a ton of them, that will take this reference design, make it a lot better, but this was redesigned in 2019 for the uh, iPhone 10. And so it's an the, iPhone 10 phone sleeve. And that was the award, award yeah, winner Yeah, that won the, the 2019 yeah. CES Innovation Award. Right. Yep. Uh, and we've got some chipsets down here. We have uh, actually our, we have a partner in Japan. Mm -hmm. We have a sales and, uh, and uh, technology partner in Japan called Murabun Corporation. Also know the big difference. We have uh, uh, back in 2016, kind of probably 10 fingers, how many partners we have. Yeah. Uh, we have over 40 today, right. partners globally throughout. So uh, including companies in Japan like Murabun Corporation, uh, Toyota Gosei, Toyota Corporation. These are all up on our website mm. that you can see public, sure. uh, publicly and, announced. I mean, it'll be great to see the uh, w uh, wireless technology in the car. So you get in the car, phone's in your pocket, it just starts charging. Exactly. So they developed, as a, as a proof of concept here, a temperature humidity sensor. This would be more for industrial building use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and it looks would look like that, but they put a, a clear uh, case on it so you could see the actual components. Mm -hmm. This is the um, antenna, the receiver antenna. This is the battery. Uh, that you never have to replace because we're charging it forever. So yeah. forever. And it, is it a? I mean, it's lithium ion or it's a super cap? What sort of battery technology uh, is it? So it's using NGK's uh, uh, in in Kinsera technology. Yeah. And does that mean that it doesn't have a, a traditional lithium ion life cycle? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. And uh, they can actually tell you a lot more about that than I can. Mm. But yeah. Sure. Sure. But I mean, also presumably by the time that battery might need requiring, it's probably good the whole component will, will be replaced with a newer version of, yeah, of that and, and technology. Yeah, and I didn't even mention, so other than, um, in addition to, I should say, to Morobon and uh, Toyota, mm. NGK is also a partner. Right. So NGK yeah. uh, uh, is incorporating this, their technology into yeah. the devices. So now moving down, uh, you can see we're getting smaller. This mm -hmm. is a 40 by 40 centimeter transmitter. Uh, referred to it as either, you know, Coda home or Coda home office. You can, mm -hmm. It's kind of getting smaller now that you can put into a home, right? Yeah, it looks more like the size of a router that router. you have with your Wi-Fi. Exactly. I mean, a bit bigger than that, but yep, not bigger. much, not much. Yep, yeah. this is a uh, concept. So we're delivering these this year to mm -hmm. partners, part of our reference design kit. Uh, this has, depending upon the size of the receiver, but anywhere between double to triple to quadruple the amount of power compared to the 2.4 system. Mm -hmm. And that's based on the... Um, uh, uh, frequency being well, the frequency and of, of 5.8. Yeah, 
uh, being uh, the ability to transmit more power than Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit like with regular Wi-Fi. For years, we've had 2.4, but they had 5 gigahertz, which was designed originally for AV systems right. to send high quality. And uh, a lot of people now choose to use 5 gigahertz for their Wi-Fi because it's got less interference than 2.4 with a less interference. And people always ask, what about yeah. interference? Well, this solves that problem. Yeah, right. right. It, it is right. very crowded at 2.4, yeah, yeah. not as much. And then, conceptually, you take it even down a step further. Mm -hmm. You take it to a, a, basically a, a one foot by one foot, yeah. very thin transmitter that you think of these, you could put it maybe on a desk, or maybe even we have concepts where the plug goes right in, just plug it right into your wall socket. Yeah. And this yeah. is your transmitter for your home. Yeah. So uh, we've come a long way since 2016, as yeah, you can yeah. say. Well, I mean, essentially this is the decade we're going to be able to be finally putting this technology into our homes and it'll be everywhere. And, and then of course the energy companies are going to have to figure out how to, how to bill you for the power and then make sure you're not getting right, it from right. the store next door. When, but I mean, that's a problem yeah. that uh, yeah. will be solved. Well, I think we've all recognized too, the amount of, uh, uh, battery chemistry that, that's required, mm. quite frankly, um, cannot, um, A, well, first of all, from an environmental standpoint, mm. it's it's not very clean, right? Yeah. This is very green. They talk about the lithium mines looking like moonscapes. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. Well, I remember back in the 2016 interview talking about how you would have little, uh, much tinier batteries because you wouldn't need that uh, uh, huge amount of battery power on demand because you'd have wireless to, uh, well, power you, wherever you went. You, you, you either have smaller batteries, yeah. very true, or no or batteries, no batteries at, at all. Like yeah. this, this is a electronic shelf label mm. uh, that you can update price tags for retail stores. We're going to show on a graphic here. Yeah. Uh, that has no battery chemistry. These are two supercapacitors. Yeah. So we eliminate batteries completely. Yeah. I mean, uh, but, but isn't a supercapacitor a type of battery because uh, it's storing energy? But it's it's uh, energy storage yeah. battery, but no chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I, I mean, the, the whole idea of having a little battery was in case there was some sort of outage, and at least you could still have a bit of power. But you would, you just right. Like one of the requirements you know. for us, uh, as far as uh, the receiver, mm. you need some sort of uh, energy storage capability. Yeah, so yeah. whether it be a battery, smaller one, mm. or a supercapacitor, but you yeah. need someone to store the energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we we uh, this is all the sci-fi stuff coming uh, true. Science fiction to science fact. It is, it is. Yeah. Any final messages for the people watching? Uh, uh, other than that uh, 2022 is the year for really wireless power. I mean, we see uh, the proliferation of IoT devices. Uh, the projection is by 2030, a trillion devices. It can't happen without wireless power. Yeah. There's not enough battery chemistry. So it's exciting. Wonderful. Well, Brian, thank you very much for your time. Alex, thank you.